several of us in here have experience with Dr. Bledsoe. She doesn't say back away from the butter. She tells you, go sit in a dark highway. Don't take your medicine, sit in a dark highway. It'll happen quickly. Well. Or she tells you, oh, I don't need to tell you in that more. Just get on and pick the nursing home you'll be going to. Well. She's very blunt. But what I'm trying well. to say to you is, we know the consequences of sin, but sometimes we don't listen and we end up doing it. That's Satan. Yeah. Those mm. are fiery darts. Yeah. If you didn't put mm. on your armor, the fiery All darts right are now. going to get All right now. All right now. Um, now, if if your thing is liquor, Satan will make that available to you. Mm. You don't have to go get it. Mm. Your friends will bring it to you. Ha. You say, friends. <laughs> yeah. It may come as a birthday gift or being sociable while y'all watch the game. Uh. You can rationalize, well, I didn't buy it. But I don't want to hurt my friend's feelings. So well, along. Well, along. And well, so along. You're drunk. Uh, uh, As a matter of faith science, be uh, aware of rationalization. Uh, the first battle between faith and human reason took place in the Garden of Eden. Uh, way back then. Uh, uh, Eve was spurred on by the lies of the serpent. Uh, Eve began to look at her situation from a purely logical perspective. And she had the idea, why shouldn't I have that apple? Mm. And she decided she was being cheated by God out of something good. Mm. Her faith faltered as reasonable thoughts of self-interest filled mm. her mind. So when you have reasonable thoughts of self-interest, beware. Because where will that get us? It will mm. not get us into the kingdom of God. Mm. That day in Eden, sin and self-importance entered into the human heart. But all the wisdom that fuels our pride is nullified by God because he's not looking for great or impressive people. So that's what you're trying to do, be great or impressive and have everybody think, oh, she's so wonderful. Mm. Like Pastor put that title on me, Sister of Mercy. Mm. I have to fight every mm. day for all that right. title mm. because I feel oh, so undeserving. I don't know how he came up with that. But what I'm saying my, my is, Lord. you know, God knows our minds, our mm -hmm. hearts, and mm -hmm. we have to do what it is that he tells us to do. If it turns out Sister Mercy, then it's Sister Mercy. Well. Um, but um, he's not looking for great or impressive people, but he wants a weak and humble servant who can only boast in the Lord. Amen. Not me, Amen. but you, Lord. Amen. Our Savior alone Amen. is our strength and our wisdom. My Lord, my and then Lord. let's go back to, we, I'm giving you examples. So maybe your thing is shopping or gambling. Maybe you can't afford to shop. Maybe you can afford to shop. But why did you take Mary Lou, who can't afford to shop and has nothing to overspend? Why did you do that to Mary Lou? <laughs> then Mary Lou, mid-month, is begging you for a loan so she can pay the rent. And you talking about her behind her back. Well, you know, who well, pay her rent. Well, now, you're not only a stumbling block, but you're a gossip too. Satan mm. loves it. God is displeased. Mm. So let's go back to the working on the building. And maybe what Pastor is telling us, that a new Jerusalem Baptist Church building is not our priority right now. What we need to focus on is getting it right with Jesus. Yes. Mm. Another thing he preached on was forgiveness. Be honest. Is there someone you're mad at who you will never, ever forgive? Mm -hmm. Think about it. Mm -hmm. Immediately after teaching his followers to pray, mm -hmm. Jesus gave warning about allowing unforgiveness to reside in your heart. Mm -hmm. He said that those who refuse to forgive others mm -hmm. won't be forgiven by the Father. No, I, did. I repeat, no, I did. if you refuse to, to forgive others, mm -hmm. you won't be forgiven by the Father. Mm -hmm. Mm. Not to misunderstand Jesus' meaning, a believer doesn't lose their salvation when they refuse to forgive. Well, Rather, well, you break well, your fellowship well, with God because of an unrepentant attitude, mm. and it gets in the way of your confession and repentance. The mm. Lord cannot ignore sin, and His Spirit will bring wrong behavior to your attention until He, until you deal with it. We talked about it in the bulletin last last week, and we mentioned that forgiveness is the act of the will more than an act of the heart. Mm -hmm. Often people don't want to, don't feel like being merciful, 
merciful to someone who has wronged them, or as the Bible says, despitefully used them. Mm -hmm. But a resentful spirit will grow into a terrible burden. Mm -hmm. The Lord admonishes us that forgiveness is best, even when it's difficult. Mm -hmm. And saints, this is a biggie. Because you won't deal with sin properly until you see sin as God sees sin. None of that rationalizing. See sin as God sees sin. And you won't know how God sees sin unless you are reading his word. We have to read and study mm. so that we can think mm. like God thinks. Right. Mm. So you have to resume, you should assume full responsibility for your unforgiving attitude mm. and admit that it is a violation of God's holy word. Mm. Claim the divine mercy that God offers and ask him to enable you to lay aside anger and resentment for that person. And you have to ask him, because it's not easy. Um, people right. hurt you. I had someone to hurt me this week, but I knew to go to God, and he gave me peace in this situation. And he told me, you know, it'll be all right. It's not your battle. And I know Pastor's tired of hearing it, but he changed my life when he told me, it's not your battle. If she beaten us, well, he's going to well, be hurt. Well, but I don't well, want to stand before him well, and well, have to say, I didn't do what you told me because hmm. someone might have taken advantage of me. Hmm. Pastor, you don't know how that changed my life. Hmm. It, it hmm. really makes a difference hmm. in how I see how people treat me. Hmm. A bitter and resentful spirit doesn't fit who we are in Christ. Hmm. Nor is it healthy to carry around an angry attitude through life. That's hmm. why scripture emphasizes the need to forgive. Hmm. And we have to choose to be liberated from that burden. Jesus hmm. promised to make us free when we release our hmm. sins to him. And then we have to learn to see, outside, our, see ourselves through the eyes of Christ. He says we are wonderfully made. So then why are so many people having cosmetic surgery to alter their appearance? This is not to say that there are not <coughs> right reasons for some surgeries, but when we alter our appearance for the sake of man and his false notions of beauty, there's a problem. We mm. have to learn what God sees as beauty. That's mm. why so many young girls now are coming up with eating disorders, some of them mm. leading to death because they're trying to please man. We must, as we work on these buildings, we have to please God. Yeah. Yeah. Some lay out in the sun to get a tan, please man. And then they end up sometimes with skin cancers. Mm. Others cover themselves in tattoos to yeah. the point where their blood is not even acceptable mm. in the blood bank. Mm. We have to please God, not mm. man. We mm. work on, as we work on the building science, let us not have false notions of beauty to guide our actions mm. um, or our own self-image and then diminish in that way what is true beauty on the inside and outside in God's eyesight. Mm -hmm. In contrast to our cultural look, beauty is described in the scripture. The beauty described in the scriptures is rich, deep, and robust. So much more than I can behold. Scriptures talk about beauty of character, wholesome relationships that stand the test of times and trials. Scripture looks at beauty in terms of virtue, of love, peace, compassion, that stand out even in darkness and hardship. You know, everybody's running to divorce court. God wants us as best we can to work it out. There are reasons for it, but nowadays sometimes people are just throwing up their hands. That's it. It's over. We have to at least go to God and petition him to help us to work things out with our, with our um, mates and with our family members. You know, there's just so much unforgiveness, and that is mm -hmm. one of the things that troubles me, mm -hmm. to see so much mm -hmm. unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. um, part of the problem is that we don't tighten the belt of our armor, and it's self-deception. We have to learn to call a spade a spade. Or as the Bible said, a trial, a trial. Yeah. When we look at our inner selves and strengths, if we are truly working on the building, we have to look at our inner selves, our strengths, our weakness. And we must be direct, clear, 
in calling what we see, no matter what it is, no matter how ugly it is, we have to call it out. Well, Don't beat yeah, around the bush yeah, or dress yeah. up the facts all right, to hide no. the hard all right, truth. No. All God right. can see them and he knows all about us. All right. Such mm -hmm. honesty, even though we might have to squirm sometimes at the ugliness <clears throat> that we see within, yet we say we're a child of the king, we need to look at it and call it out. It may be an uncomfortable truth, but it, it's one of the greatest spiritual dangers. It's soul-killing destruction. Therefore, we have to ask God to give us discernment and accountability for our actions, for our thoughts and deeds. Um, and you know, to read in Psalms, I believe it's 96, 3 to 5, but it talks about calling a fig a fig and a trial, a trial a trial. You have to call it what it is. So then if you are a glutton, if you are a shopaholic, an alcoholic, mm -hmm. a drug addict, a mm -hmm. thief, or the like, mm -hmm. but you remain convinced that you don't have a problem, you'll be unable to take the steps necessary for recovery because you haven't confessed <clears throat> it to Christ. You haven't repented of it if you say, I don't really have a problem. Mm -hmm. If you're an unfaithful mate with a roving eye, or if you're a spousal mm -hmm. or parental abuser who blames it on other problems, incompatibility, or unhappiness as the source of that problem, you're actually closing the door on any real healing and reconciliation. Pastor Henderson can counsel you all night long mm. and all day long, but until we are truthful with ourselves, mm. until we call a fig a fig and a spade yeah. a spade, yeah. We lose the opportunity to make it right with God through confession and repentance. Mm. We make it impossible to save relationships. Relationships. Mm. Science, if you have a big house, a big job, income, wardrobe, mm. position, status, if you have those things that are most important to you and that are in the number one spot, you better call it out. Call it a fig. Even if it's in number one, me, myself, and I. Mm. Name it, call it out. You're worshiping a false <coughs> idol. Mm. And we have to be so careful worshiping false idols. Mm. A lot of people worship their homes, their cars, their jobs, they brag on it. These are false idols. Mm. The ancients had their idols, and ours are no different than theirs. They're just called a different thing. Mm. So name them, call them out for what they are, call a fig a fig. They are idols. Mm. So if you're working on the building, if you're kingdom building, these things are not a true foundation. And you might find yourself, just like I got up this morning, and my little presentation was wiped out from the computer. You don't want to be wiped out from that book of life. Do what you got to do. Examine yourself. Call it out and ask the Lord to help you to rid yourselves of these things so that you can fully be what he would have you to be. So you need to determine today. I have decided to follow Jesus, mm -hmm. Jesus alone. Mm -hmm. If you're outside his covering, if you haven't fellowship, fellowshiped yourself, mm -hmm. get covered today. Mm -hmm. These mm -hmm. are very serious times, and I hear it in what the pastor is preaching to us. I see it in what's happening in our nation. It's mm -hmm. everywhere. It's not time mm -hmm. to play. Mm -hmm. It's serious. Mm -hmm. Work on the building. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Say, we're going to modify the.